Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another meetup of Romania Power BI and Modern Excel user group with a special guest, uh, the calculation group wizard that uh, everybody knows that we are learning from him every time. Welcome Bernat and uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, for, for our newest members, my name is Christian Angel and together with uh, the second Christian, Christian Prifty, we will be your host today. Feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn and stay up to date with uh, whatever we we learn and share with uh, with the community. Uh, the agenda for today is uh, straightforward. We are on the welcome and overview part now. Uh, I'll quickly show you the August meetups, well, half of it at least. Uh, then Bernat will have uh, his feature session. We can have a Q&A session in the end if we're, if his, Bernat is not answering all the questions during the, the session. Then we'll have a two-minute uh, raffle with uh, Enterprise DNA, uh, and I'll give you some more uh, details about it uh, in a minute. And then the wrap-up and uh, whoever wants to, we'll stop the recording and whoever wants to stay a bit more for chit-chat, feel free to do it. House rules, same house rules since uh, three years now. Please make sure that during Bernat's session, your microphone is muted and your video is turned off. Type your questions or comments in the chat area. If you have a burning question that we, you want us to ask to Bernat, please prefix it with a Q so we can uh, spot it easier. If you have problems with the internet connection, please drop off and join again. Teams is recording everything. And uh, speaking of recording, this is not the note to myself, so I don't uh, forget to start recording. This session is recorded, and if you don't want to be part of a recorded session, uh, you, this is the moment to log off and uh, see the recording on, uh, on our YouTube channel. In terms of future sessions for August, being a vacation day, uh, we, we will have a Romanian the Romanian track uh, on the 8th of August with Diana Meyer on uh, with a session on user experience in Power BI. And then we haven't uh, announced yet uh, because there were some changes uh, for the English uh, session. You will be announced. It will be on the 29th of August. And uh, if you are part of uh, Ropag on Meetup, you will get the notification in time to join. Uh, if you are, if you want to see the former recordings, all the other recordings, please go to our YouTube channel on uh, bit.ly slash ropag underscore history, and you will see a playlist with uh, all of the sessions that uh, we had until now. And that is the place where this session will be uh, also added. Since uh, 2021 now, three years already, August, almost three years, uh, we have a primary official sponsor, Enterprise DNA, offering, uh, actually, I see my slide with uh, one full annual enterprise membership. Well, uh, good news, there are two every month. So this month, uh, it's two memberships, free of charge to distribute to our members. And uh, in, order to, in order to distribute these uh, licenses, we will have a raffle in the end. Uh, please scan the QR code or go to uh, the short link bit.ly slash 57 If you don't have time to scan it now, don't worry. We will place the link in the, um, in the chat during the session. Uh, even if you don't want to participate in the raffle, please fill up the form and uh, provide us feedback so we can improve our future meetups. Uh, one more announcement to do. In September, uh, the European Microsoft Fabric Community Conference is coming to Europe. The one that uh, had a huge success in Las Vegas, it's uh, coming to Europe too, in Stockholm. Uh, this is the short link to uh, register. There are some still some very good prices. And on top of the good prices, if you are signing up with uh, Fab UGS, you get an extra 200 euro uh, discount. So if you are planning to go, use this code and save some money. It's totally worth it to, to go there. 
not that uh, I'm speaking there, but uh, uh, it's really, really cool um, conference. Coming back to the session today, thank you again, Bernat, for coming over. For whoever doesn't know Bernat, uh, he's an MVP since 2022, I think. He's just uh, renewed in July. He's a blogger on uh, esbrina uh, slash ba.com. And uh, he's a Power BI Fabric and Tabular Editor 3 expert and Calculation Group wizard. In my view, you are the man with calculation groups. And every time I have uh, something to, to do with calculation groups, I'm checking either your blog or your sessions that you did uh, anywhere in the world. We finally met in person this year at SQL Beats, I'm, and I'm yep. really, really happy that uh, you've taken the time to come and present to our user group. Thank you again for this. A few words about yourself and the stage is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you for these kind words. I really enjoy being here. It was great meeting you at SQL Beats. We had lots of fun. And yeah, yeah. I just uh, going to share my screen. I mean, for those who don't know me, I'm based in Barcelona. And uh, yeah, as uh, Christian was saying, I'm an MVP. And uh, yeah, and I blog, and this is the actually the company in which uh, is part of, I mean, I'm a, one of the partners in this company, and we, well, we do BI consultancy. So like many of you, I guess. Okay, let me put back here. Okay, because I want to see if there's anything. Okay, and uh, yeah. So I do a lot of scripts, a lot of calculation groups. Lately, I have the last two articles are about modifying the report layer with uh, C sharp scripts, which is something that is quite new, and it has like some nice use cases. At least the use cases I, I thought it was like okay, I have to write the script right away. So that's why <laughs> I publish two scripts like in one week, <laughs> and th there was a lot of work. But anyway, that's uh, about uh, enough about me. So let's jump into the presentation that we have for you today. I kind of revamped an older one I have, and uh, hopefully this will be even better than the last time I did it. So first, let's start with the bank. So what is this sorcery? You see, I have a table that shows me the values of any of these measures. And I have here the values from January to December for the year I have selected, which is, is quite normal. But here you see that I have the total. This is still normal. But then I also get the previous year value, the year over year difference, and the year over year percentage change, which is very nice. As you can see, I'm changing even like the format string, I'm changing uh, the. Um, I mean, even like the, the conditional formatting, because this is also something I want to stress because there is the belief that once you start using calculation groups, you cannot do conditional formatting anymore. And actually I have an article just about this saying, yeah, calculation groups, conditional formatting, yes, it's possible. This is the title. Well, this is one of my most popular articles of ever. Whenever I go into the statistics, it's always in the top five. So <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is that, of course, it's not as easy as it would be like with just a measure or something, but uh, well, you need to think a bit differently when you're working with calculation groups. Uh, as you can see here, I can change the measure. And of course, this will might take a little, okay, but I change everything here. I even made another one that changing the, the unit in which this is shown, if I want to show it in millions. This is something I can do, or millions with a decimal. This is also something I can change. Yeah, all this is uh, quite convenient. And here, the another uh, surprising feature of this one, besides the, the conditional formatting, is that oh, here the conditional formatting for the values is is highlighting. Uh, maybe let me change that to thousands again. Is highlighting the month in which it had the highest value. Yeah, so you see 36, so you see the different, this is a product color, and so you see that for different product colors, the highest uh, sales is uh, in a different month sometimes. So mm -hmm. it might be something that you might want to have a look. Just, I mean, it's just for the demo, but still it's fun. And here now things are sorted by the total value, but if I want to order them by the year over year percent, 
I can do that as well. I think so you see now I see this is the one that improved more from last year. And here's the one that went worse. So silver gray is going downhill and yellow is going up. Yeah. So if you work with Power BI and you try to set up a table, you know that many of these things are not straightforward. So, well, it's hopefully impossible. by the end of this presentation, we'll see how can this be done. Yeah. I mean, there's like, I don't know how many, maybe there's like five calculation groups in here. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see at least what is a calculation group, how do we build them, and some use cases for them. Okay. So, why did calculation groups come to Tom? Yeah. Well, if you did some time intelligence, you know that this happens a lot. Yeah. You have for each measure, you need the previous year measure, da, 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 da. and it's like, why am I doing this? This is so boring. So somebody said, hey, what if we put all this wrapping code somewhere else? So, and something like this. And they say, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So basically, they kind of solve this problem, but the tool that, well, the feature that they develop allows you for much more. So this is something that I, I mean, because you Google calculation groups and you get only time intelligence, but you can do it for many, many other use cases. So, but what are there? Are they, but many people are something that they jump over the explanation and say, okay, uh, it's a feature that is, the, no, but what is a calculation group? It's a set of DAX expressions that replace the value and the format string of, for, yeah? On the scope because it, they they become like a table and then this table places a filter right so when a measure is under that filter then the measure value and the measure format string is replaced by the expression in the calculation item yeah but when you override this then you can reuse the original measure in the expression which allows for many many options here it's a very basic one here we're just overriding. You see, I have a measure. Let me show you where I do have this. Okay, so this is a measure. It's right here. And as you can see, it's just blank. It's nothing there. Okay, I can see this blank. Okay. However, when I apply a calculation item from this calculation group, I see that I get suddenly a value and a format string. Yeah, so I'm overriding this blank thing with something. Yeah, this is one way. Very good. Here, it used to say that you cannot see the expressions in calculation in desktop, but now you can. Okay. So uh, I think that just for from last month, it's already general availability. You don't need to enable anything. But if you go to the model view, Finally. and then once in the model view, you need to go into the model view again, so to say. And here you will see your calculation goes. Let me see if I can enable this zoom it thing. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so we get the calculation groups over here. And let me do it again. Oh, wait, no, that's not what I wanted to say. Okay, you, you can see I'm not really good at zoom it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, for instance, this is a dynamic measure. That's the one we're looking at. You see here, we can finally see that the four calculation items are there. And the DAX for this measure, uh, the DAX is here. Yeah, you can see, um, well, well, we'll go now in, in detail on what is this, but basically it's overriding whatever expression we have with this, yeah? In this case, we'll see why we put this if around it in a second. So let me go back to the report. Oh, no, I didn't change anything. Okay, whatever. Okay, so so how we, we can use uh, to build calculation groups? We can use tabular editor, of course. This has been the only way to do that for a long time. Now we can also do it in desktop. Yeah, in the tabular editor three, you can even use uh, DAX scripts, which make it very convenient as you uh, you can you know modify. Uh, all the calculation items at once or create new ones as well. So let's try to create a calculation group very easily. So, and I'll show you which way. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's do the first one here. 
Okay, so I'll create a semantic model, new calculation group. Just to show you a little bit what happens when you're not careful with calculation groups. Yeah. So let's imagine we're building a, a dynamic measure one. So this would be like sales amount. And then instead of I don't care what is there, I want the expression to be sales amount. Yeah, so it will overwrite any measure by this. Okay. This is one. And now we'll create a new one just so that we see that we have two of them. And we're going to use the margin as well. Margin, margin. Good. So, and I will change the name. This is it's a bit bad because when you create it, it, it kind of like, it lets you write DAX right away. But I mean, before writing any DAX, you need to give a name it. Otherwise you get, a, I mean, it's not easy to understand which is which because you have to, you know, the general calculation groups folder and then inside the calculation group that is called calculation group. So it doesn't make it very easy to be honest. So rename, so this would call a dynamic measure demo. Yeah, something like this. And then calculation groups have a column that contains this expression and then another column just to sort them. So we need also to change that. Yeah, I always use the same name for calculation group and calculation group column. Yeah. I make measure. The reason is that, I mean, if we only have one column and it, we don't really need like to call it different, something different from the table. And when we place the column in the fill uh, in the filter panel, for instance, and then it becomes very easy to remember where are we using that. Okay, so here I have my new calculation group, and I'll place that uh, here in the slicer. Okay, and I have a margin sales amount. And here I have a chart that already has like the dummy measure and uh, and a dynamic title. Uh, and here's the trick, because now if I apply this, then I'm also breaking the title, yeah? So that's very important because um, sometimes we don't see it and it breaks the visual and you wouldn't understand what is going on. Well, I'll tell you what is going on. You had probably uh, a conditional format by field value. So you had the measure, which was returning, uh, you know, an hexadecimal code. But you applied, uh, you know, an overriding calculation group without uh, any care, and boom. And then now it's a number; it doesn't know what is going on, and maybe, well, maybe you have a problem. And this is still okay because we're just overriding. But if I was applying a year-over-year -year calculation on the title, then um, then it would be worse because it would be like kind of trying subtracting text from text, and then it would totally break the visual, which is worse. Okay, so we need to be careful. And how can we be careful? Well, we have some special uh, functions that I, I show you. So let's let's go back to the original uh, dynamic. So it's already fixed for us, which is the rub, not this one. I want the dynamic. Where is where is it? Oh, they're not alphabetically sorted. That's interesting. There may be a precedence or there. Yeah, probably that's it. Okay, so let's see how I should have done this. You see here, let me put this here. Here we have this condition saying, okay, if the measure, what is this? This returns true if the measure that I'm about to overwrite is one of these. Yeah, this will be returned true. So I can do something depending on the measure that I'm about to overwrite. I will overwrite them all, yeah? That, that's also very important. It will overwrite them all, but for some, it will look as if it didn't do anything, yeah? Why is that? Because if it's one of these three, of course, we'll see that something happened because it was blank and now it's returning a value of the margin measure, so we know that something happened. But for the rest of the measures, I mean, if it was not blank, it was something else, yeah? Um, 
here it will return the selected measure. The selected measure is a placeholder that it is the measure that you're about to replace, right? So if you if you replace something by itself, it looks like you did nothing. So that's exactly what we want. And this is exactly what we're doing here. Okay? Is this clear? Because if you remember, I mentioned also the format strings. What about the format strings? Well, the format strings are really close. So in the first versions, so before calculation groups, you could create them. You could still use them in Power BI, but then you would get like a weird folder with many invisible measures there, which were the format strings of all the measures you had. So because it actually, it treats your measures format string as if they were measures themselves. Yeah, that's a bit weird. All you need to know is that the format uh, expression needs to do something very similar than value. Yeah. So you only want to override the format string expression for certain measures. You don't want to overwrite everything because this is dangerous. Yeah. So... Here, as you see, it will only overwrite the format string of these three measures. For all the other measures, it will just leave whatever format string was there. So it will look as it did nothing. Okay. So far, so good. Hopefully, yeah. Let's go back to the report and see what else do we need. I mean, if this is very basic or something, just say, Bernard, go on. Yeah. But uh, I think it's good that we all no, get no, it. It's good to set up the base and then go into details. Okay. Yeah, because then some people will say, hey, wait a minute, Bernard, this, we can do that with field parameters and uh, dynamic measures. But like, yeah, yeah, wait, wait a minute. It's just, just, we're just getting started. Okay, because now we get into the big event, like calculation group to do uh, time intelligence. As you see here in my sales table, I created quite a few measures so that you get the idea of what I mean. Yeah, you see. I have all these measures because I have, I, it's not so much. I have four base measures and maybe like four or six calculations. And you see that this is already quite unmanageable. Yeah. So here we're going to, we want to get something better. Yeah. So how would we go about creating a, a calculation group for time intelligence? Yeah. So. We would uh, let's do that now in tabular editor. So I'll get the three so we can see everything at once. Here I'll say I want to create a calculation group. We we'll call it time intel demo. Okay. And I'll change that as well. Time intel demo. Okay. And now I'll script this. Okay. Okay, this is too small. So now here, we're going to start writing calculation, calculation item. Wait, what is going on? Okay, I'm not sure what is going on here. Okay. Calcu Whip. Now, okay. Calculation item, so current year. Yeah, the current year, we don't need to transform anything. We just we use whatever the measure it is, is the value we want to see at current year, right? So we'll write selected measure. Okay. And we don't need to change the format string, so we can just go ahead and write the next one. Calculation item, and then we'll write previous year. How we calculate the previous year of a, of a value? We'll just go and say calculate. And then of the selected measure. Oh no, not the selected it is need to be careful. Here it's selected measure. This is the one. And we'll just go uh, something easy, same period last year from the date uh, date. Okay. And um yeah, we'll just leave it there. Yeah, we could go on and do much more uh, complex like current year, previous year, and so on. But this is now only my script, so I'll just execute that. And then it's already synchronized in my model. So that we get with yellow banner, we need to refresh. We're just gonna change if uh, check if this this works. Okay. 
So where is it? Uh, we have time interval demo. There it is. Yeah, so here I have a matrix with the dummy measure and the values, these and the rows. So we're guys gonna use this. Uh, let me. Uh, no, not this one. This oh, one no. in yeah, the column. Yep, correct. So as we can see, this seems to be working because for 20, uh, 2008, I'm getting the value that I have for 2007 and so on. So this is just to prove that it works. Okay. Of course, for time intelligent ones, you, you should also, and maybe specifically as well, you should also protect that so that you don't overwrite everything. Yeah, because I was mentioning that the year over year, once you start doing operations with that, then it's very it's very dangerous if you apply that over a text measure, because then it will break the visual and you might not realize what is going on and might cause a problem, okay? So you would just uh, do a selected measure over all the values that you have, or there's other ways. I didn't, stress that but we have another one that is a selected measure name so if you have a list with all the measures that you want to have this sort of effect then you can check is this measure name there then do this if it's not just leave it as it was that's the other approach that actually that's the one i follow in a i have a script that will create a very nice uh, uh, time intel cal group for you and the way i do it is i create a cal a calculated table in your model with all the names of the measures you had selected when you executed the script. And it will check if the measure you're about to overwrite is contained on that table or not. And if you want to change that, then you just update that table and it's it's good. Because otherwise, you will have to go through all the calculation items and change it on the value and in the format string expression. So it's a lot of work. So that's why it's good to sometimes have it somewhere else. Okay, so far so good. So there's something that you need to realize as well is that calculation groups can be used like any other filter in Power BI. Yeah, so as we saw, we can have them as part of the visual or we can even apply them from the filter panel. Like in this case, you see I have the sales amount, but I applied the previous year. So I'm getting the previous year value, which is this one, yeah? And uh, and then I the first time I saw it, it was like, oh my god, you can actually use it inside DAX. Yeah. So if we have a look here, sales py using cal group, this one. You see, I'm just applying over the measure, I'm applying the filter. Yeah. So this is my column of the calculation group, and this is the name of the calculation item. So boom. You can, uh, and then you get the value, yeah? We need to be careful if we also want the calculation either format string. At first, it was not possible. I mean, measures you didn't have uh, dynamic format strings before. Now, you probably can't do it. I'm not sure though. No, maybe not. <laughs> I'm thinking, but uh, yeah, because you always get to calculate. But I think in the in the dynamic format string, you can also use selected measure and selected measure format string functions. Yeah, I think so. So, so then, yeah, then you could do the same. Yeah, let's let's try something very quickly. This is this is life. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm changing this and say, okay, I want to see the year over year percent. Yeah, of course, this will be terrible. I'll see here. I don't know what will happen. Okay, so I see. Okay, so this is quite a lot. Yeah. But using calculation, no, this one. Yeah, but of course, I'm not getting a percentage. Yeah. So it should be like the 600% thing. So here, then I, I would just use this and go into the dynamic. Yeah. So I want to define a dynamic format string for this. And then I would write the same thing, but instead of the measure, I want to write selected measure format string. Yeah. So 
it will get that measure, then it will apply that, and it will return the, the format string of, of this. Let's see what happens. It should work. Yeah. Can you, could you point, please, on the top left uh, when you are changing the format on the dynamic oh, yeah. or the measure this itself? One, yeah. yeah, yeah, because not everybody saw uh, up until now this. So it's, oh, yeah. uh, First it's important. First, we change here to dynamic. Yeah. And then we get this extra menu here on the side. And then we can select the format. But I, I don't think it's working. Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. Select and measure format string. Okay, not working. I thought it would, but it does not. Okay, so yeah, then you lose the, the dynamic uh, format string. But I think I changed it. Yeah, oh, no, no, that's okay. Okay, but there, there is a benefit on doing this though, because sometimes, um, you know, I mean, Power BI, when you select something, then it, it, it moves all the filters somewhere else as well, right? Uh, so other visuals in which it has interaction, or if you have a tooltip, then all these filters travel there. And then you will have other measures there, and well, these filters will be applied to those measures, and so on. But this can be problematic. Yeah, so let me show you here. So I have here a chart in which I'm using two calculation items for the series, and I have a sales amount, I think, yeah? So, and then... Uh, now I need to exit this for a moment. Oh, no, wait, no, I have here. A... <laughs> so, and here is my tooltip. Yeah, so I have the four, uh, but I don't have a button to go back, really. <laughs> wait a minute. Insert, let's put it. Yeah, I don't want to close that. I don't know, where is it? Uh, yeah, back, back, back. Okay, good. Yeah, so... I have only a current year and previous year, but I would like that the user can see current year, previous year, year over year, and year over year percent whenever it's there, right? So if I go back, okay. However, look what happens. So when I'm here, then the filter context is, is messing my tooltip and it's only showing me the same value, which is not really what I wanted. Yeah. Is this clear what is going on? Yeah. Also here, when I'm, now here, maybe I have a cart and then, okay, but uh, I don't know, maybe somebody will click here and it's not aware that this cart has changed as well because now you're applying this previous year filter to everything. So you need to be careful. Of course, you can remove interactions and stuff, but sometimes that might not be a possibility. So here, the alternative I'm presenting, oh, wait, I need to fix that. <laughs> uh, sales previous year using Cal Group, I mean, bring that back to previous year so we get some decent chart okay so here i'm using a uh, sales amount and the regular uh and this previous year as a measure yeah so i'm applying the measure the the logic is the, from the calculation group but i'm uh, bringing it inside a measure and then of course i don't have the problem of the filter context and i'm seeing perfectly all the values and it doesn't matter where I'm at because both measures have the same filter context, so I'm getting the same, um, the same tooltip. Yep. So this is one I wanted to show you. Let's go on. Now some rules and warnings. Yes. Um, some of them has have hit me in the back <laughs> sometimes in the past. So only one calculation item of the same calculation group can be active in the same evaluation. Yeah. So here I have margin, I have margin percent, it's all good, yeah? If I apply to, it's like if I plan none, yeah? Then it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Then no calculation group is applied. A calculation item is applied. If they are from the same calculation group, I can apply more than a calculation item if they come from different calculation groups, but not from the same one, yeah? Okay. Next. So this is also now very clear on, on, on if you create a calculation group in Power BI Desktop, you'll get a big warning saying, hey, you're not going to be able to use implicit measures anymore. Maybe some people do not even know what an implicit measure is. But just to make it clear, this is what will happen. Yeah. So if I'm going to sales and here, for example, these are sales quantities and numeric column. 
normally I would be able to, you know, drag it and say, okay, show it here. And it's not happening. Yeah. So I cannot do that anymore. I, I don't have that Sigma sign in front of anything. And so, um, yeah, you have to use explicit measure, which is a good thing anyway. So, yeah, go ahead and, and, and do it. Uh, next. Now, and this is important. So, because at first I thought of like calculation groups could be some sort of a custom DAX function or something like this, but th this is not no. really true because they work at the measure level always. Yeah. It, it, it's very important that you remember this. Yeah. So, for instance, uh, let's see. So, you already saw the one that I. So, this will not work. Yeah. So here you see I'm trying to apply a, a calculation item to an expression, yeah. But here what will happen? The measure, right? Yeah, it's going to the measure. So I'm, it's like mm -hmm. you know doing the year to date on this part only. So I'm getting a divide, and then I'm applying the the thing here, and and then mm -hmm. the counter, which is probably not what I want to do. So be very careful. Yeah, always fit them measures only. Yeah, and this will also be very relevant once we start talking on the precedence of calculation groups, yeah, and how this works. Okay, now we're getting on the tricky part of the presentation. <laughs> 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 okay, so precedence. So when we have more than one, what happens? Yeah, because I mean, we're talking it's replacing, but we have two, and then what is going on? Here, a very good thing. Of the uh, of power, the, uh, the experience in Power BI Desktop is that when you click on calculation groups, you see here we're getting uh, a nice view on the uh, precedent. Oh, uh, not this one. <laughs> Sorry about this. Uh, yeah. So on the on the precedence of calculation groups. So this is highest precedent, higher precedence number. Yeah, and this is the lowest one. Okay. So it looks, uh, it looks a bit more understandable that the number in the precedence yeah, in tabular editor. Totally, totally. They should really go and copy this because otherwise, in <laughs> first you have them all mixed up here. So you need to go and pick up which were a calculation group, which not. You need to go there and then write on a notebook all the numbers and then remember which is which. Yeah, remember everything. Yeah. So if you have, have three, like, it's uh, okay. But if you have 10, it, yeah, and it, here you can even change them. So you can just the drag and drop and put things in the order you want. Beautiful experience. I love this. Yeah, and the same for the calculation items, which you get in, in, in Tabular Editor in this case. But if you go to the calculation items, where are they? Uh, oh, here. So here you can also drag and drop and, and put the calculation items in each order you want. Okay. Next. Um, so let's go back. So here I'm combining, uh, let me show you first. So what we're gonna do is apply, I'm gonna show you what happens when you apply a very simple um, dynamic measure calculation group and a time intelligence calculation group. Yeah, and we'll see what happens when we re reverse the precedence on a calculation item that modifies uh, the, um, the format string, so um, we're going to do that with a year over year percent. Yeah. I mean, you already know that expressions will be a bit more complex, but for the purpose of this demo, is, is, is good enough. So this is our measure. Yeah. We drag them in a visual. This is what we have. If we don't do anything else, this is how it will be evaluated. So it's going to become a blank, end of the story. However, let's imagine that we have now a a calculation item from a calculation group with precedence equals 10, yeah? And this is the expression that it has. Yeah, so here we're doing the year over year percent. Yeah, so we previous year and we divide one by the other, right? Again, normally the expression would be more complex, but this is the key. So what happens when we apply this expression on this measure? Well, this is what happens. This is a, the new expression and how and what is going to be evaluated. Yeah, of course, if we only apply this thing, we're going to get blank because this is blank, this is blank, and of course, this will be blank as well. 
Okay. However, we have another calculation, item applied, with a lower uh, precedence. Yeah? So we start by the highest precedence and we go down. This is always like this, no matter whatever, who tells you <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> this is how it works. Took me a long time to really believe it. So this is expression of my dynamic measure calculation group. Yeah. Pick whatever you want and then overwrite. But remember, we're not going to overwrite the whole expression. We're going to overwrite the measures on the expression. Yeah, very important. So when I apply this calculation item expression on this already building <laughs> expression, yeah, mm -hmm. this is what happens. Yeah, so I'm replacing the measures by the content of my expression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And whatever I had, if I had a more complex thing, then everything would be condensed here. Yeah. Okay, this is good. Beautiful. Now, what happens with the format string? Yeah. Here, the format string, I know that it's a string already, but let's imagine it's not. Let's imagine it's a measure. Yeah, as I was telling you, we have a format string. Okay. So now, this is the expression I have for um, my time intel calculation. Wait, this is not right. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right, it's right, sorry. <laughs> Zero percent, so it, it's applying the percentage, yeah, whatever it is, they, no, show it as a percentage. So we have something on, coming from the measure, we have this expression, what's the resulting expression? Well, it's a, it's a string, it's a string, because we will write whatever it came with that string, yeah? Okay, the, so now it's a string. It's only a string. So, but you wait, wait, but we have another calculation item, which is, uh, yeah, the one that comes from sales amount, which is like euros, right? What will happen now? Yeah, because you, you think, oh, it's gonna be euros. Oh, no, it's not. No, it, because it's not the measure. Very good, that's exactly the like, yeah. Finally, so, I get yeah, it. it it is very important to understand that since here we are not using selected measure format string at all, mm -hmm. then there's no no measure left there. Yeah. So and and we're not using any, I don't know, we could use a measure there if we wanted, but we're not using that. So mm -hmm. we're just saying no, whatever it comes now, this is the format string you need to use. So when new things come, then there's nothing else to be done. And uh, I think that makes sense. And I think that's the reason why they apply from high to low, you know, because maybe at some point you realize like, hey, there's no point in going far because, I mean, nothing's going to change. So yeah. it's probably more efficient to do it this way. Uh, yeah? Just like uh, nested ifs. So Something like uh, this. Yeah. The, so the order <laughs> is important. Yeah. Order is important. So, but sometimes you're there and say, Bernard, that I'm, I'm exchanging, I'm getting the same result. I mean, because in many cases it, it doesn't really matter for the value, but maybe it matters for the format string. So let's have a look. What happens when we do it the other way around? So we have our dummy. This is our expression. When we apply it, well, we get that expression, yeah? And now we have our other calculation item, now with a lower uh, precedence. What will happen? Well, it happened this. So we, we, we go back to the exact same expression. Yeah? So from a value perspective, no difference. However, what happens now with the, oh, I don't know if I double click or what, but we have that format string measure sort of thing for the format. And we have uh, this expression, which is a string. And we'll overwrite the measure format string with just a string. Let's see if I didn't miss. Okay, yeah. So now it's black. So this is what we have. This is the expression that will be evaluated. Yeah? But of course, when we come here and say, okay, but I want to apply this expression, it's not gonna, because this is a string already. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so then we'll have, what we'll have? We'll have a year over year percent, which will not be a percent, but this is wrong. Yeah, so <laughs> the other order is correct. Yeah, normally, yeah, you should imagine also like going high and high. So the highest is kind of the one that we're going to rule at the end. Yeah. 
So if you want some calculation group to have the final word on how the format string should look, you should bring that on the highest precedence in general. Yeah, of course, there's <laughs> many nuances and stuff. So precedence matters. Okay. So there is a few more things that you might be interested in knowing, but I think that's enough for, uh, for getting to know calculation groups. So we can maybe, we can have a look at the calculation groups that we were seeing here, if you want, or wait, sure. no, let's. Yeah, there, can... there was one question in, oh, yeah, uh, in the chat uh, regarding mm -hmm. the file. Uh, will you be able to share the file with the uh, uh, audience after the meetup? Or uh, do you have it already on uh, on your... No, uh, this is one that I keep for the demos. I mean, because it's a quite of a mess inside, you know, you have several mm -hmm. calculation groups. This one is basically to present, so there's no real meaning there. And the calculation groups, they are very, very simple. Mm -hmm. So you can, I mean, there's nothing tricky in what we saw. Here I have another one. It has a lot more calculation group examples. Yeah, with the use and, cases. Um, we can have a look here and then we can dive in any calculation item that you want to have a look. Nearly all of them are explained in my blog, so I invite you to go and through the blog because the, that's where I have been explaining all of them. Okay, so here. Um, wait. Do, 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 do. Why is the time intelligence not there? Uh, yeah, okay. You are selecting uh, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, marks. I was like, what is going on? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, probably I wanted to show the, the, the effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here, for instance, you can... Okay, the first thing is you can build visuals that you could not do with the measures, even if you had them. Yeah, if you had like the, the 32 measures, but you cannot do... Okay, maybe not current months, but something like this. Oops, sorry. Not this one. So you see a visual like this is very nice. So you have for all the measures, you have the current year, previous year, year over year. This sort of visual you cannot build with just measures. You need a calculation group for that. Yeah. This is one example. This is quite easy to use. So uh, it, it's very easy believe, and very likely to use. Yeah. <laughs> I believe this one can be uh, done replicated with field parameters, the easy stuff. Then field when parameters. you go with subtotals and uh, so on, mm, then it gets uh, messy. So the one that you showed messy, at the beginning. Yeah. I don't think it's going to work with field parameters, but prove me wrong. <laughs> I mean, okay. you can always do it with uh, dynamic measures, lots of dynamic measures. Mm -hmm. You could have two disconnected tables and I don't know. And yeah, something like this dirty things there but uh yeah of course if you but uh it's got a, a lot of work and a lot of pain so this is also very very likely to use and very easy so if you have an order date and a delivery date yeah sometimes you want to change all your measures so like, oh because i don't know that department asked for some other uh, page on the report and they want to see everything by the delivery date instead of the order date. So do I have to replicate all the measures and so on? No, no need. You can just create a calculation group and you can change the active calculation, the active uh, relationship just like, just like this. So I mean, here, let me connect to the other model and I, we can have a look. Use relationship, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, but the, the, it's really easy. So let me show. No, is that it? No, that's the other one. Gallery. And now I have no idea the name of it. Let me check. Um, model. So you see the order date, you don't need to do anything because this is already how it's behaving, right? But it's good that you have the option, so just create one like this. And then by delivery date, it's uh, just like this. Uh, so really easy, really easy, very powerful. So 
What else can we do? Here, model two. This, this is also interesting. So you see, th this also happened to me at work. So I had this very nice report. Let me make this a bit bigger. So I had already my sales model working fine until, and then they said, yeah, but Bernard, we have a table that is the key account manager that, you know, you have, you have products and you have stores or could be mm -hmm. customers, right? I know, but we have this, this uh, account manager manages certain products for certain customers and we want to filter by account manager. I was like, it's not going to happen. I mean, this is, this is <laughs> horrible. I cannot create relationships here. Yeah. So. I mean, probably you could redo all your data warehouse in a way that the key account manager is stored somehow in the fact table or something. Yeah. But, uh, well, that's probably not going to happen either. So here we can create a virtual relationship in a way that it works. Yeah. So how we do that. So basically we check on what is selected. So here, if I filter by cam one or something, yeah, you see that I'm getting only the row that are relevant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, it captures the manufacturer, which comes is in the product. Yeah, and the continent, which is from the store. Yeah. So it captures the values and then kind of moves them to the respective tables uh, using treat as. Yeah, yeah, using. I I wanted to ask you this: Are you yeah. using treat as for virtual totally, relationships? Totally, yeah. Yeah, and here in this case, I think I'm moving them separately, but this is this is could be wrong, yeah, because um, sometimes you really because it's not the same applying you know uh, Europe in the store and Contoso in there. Sometimes you need to really apply them together. So mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, I mean you need to be careful there. Uh, let me check what's the name of this one. I think it's CAM relationships. Yeah. So CAM relationships. I, I see this is even hidden you now because it's not something you want people to, to work with. But once they are enabled, yeah. So I'm basically capturing the values from the CAM table, this connected table, mm -hmm. and I'm treating them as the store continent and using also keep filter so that it, uh, if there's any other filter there, it, it will kind of combine them. And the same for the manufacturer, I bring them over the product table. Yep. So this is something that you can do, not too tricky, and it can solve a big problem <laughs> if you I, have. I have two something. questions here. Yes. One of them, uh, in terms of performance on uh, big uh, models, is is this going to impact it with uh, three tests and keep filters? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Probably. But uh, right? <laughs> if you have a better alternative, go for it. But uh, <laughs> we're, we're, I mean, I don't think it's easy to have an alternative to that. Right? Yeah, you have to redo the model. Yeah, probably. I mean, if that's something you want to do, I mean, there's always tax optimization is it's something you need to think once you have a problem. Exactly. Not nearly not, not before because maybe it's fine and then you wasted your time, right? <laughs> so uh, try it. I mean, it, you see, it's not really long to implement this. Yeah. And then you say, no, I mean, it's two minutes. Okay, then maybe it's time to think about your model. But um, if it's not, I mean, and sometimes I have no idea, but uh, if the, people don't have an alternative for getting the value, people get very, you know, it's okay, it's okay. I'm getting my value. So mm -hmm. uh, it depends on, on, on what they're used to and, and what they expect. So And uh, anyway. one more question on this yes. one. And in general, in calculation groups, uh, the question is uh, for you, but the answer should be for everybody. Is uh, row level uh, security working with calculation group uh, as expected? Or do you have, uh, or here, for example, if you have a key account manager two, yes. will it be able to see only his part if you are enabling uh, row level security? Oh. I mean, as long as you're filtering the this disconnected table. It should. It should, right? I mean, you're just enabling this filtering. So whatever it's there, it's going to be here. But um, So mm. it should be even easier if you're filtering. Yeah, well, wait, wait a one. minute, wait a minute. No, we, yeah, because this is dangerous. Because I, once I had this conversation with a colleague that he was like really like leveraging calculation groups 
and uh, and role level security, even like for you know selling services and stuff. Like, well, you mm -hmm. have to be careful because this works as long as it's enabled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what if somebody connects to the model and then just creates a query in which the calculation group is not there? Or selects disabled, then it you can see everything, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. there is some possibility. I haven't tested though, yeah. But you might uh, be aware that there is now the possibility of defining uh, no selection expression or something like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I heard about it, but never used it. Yeah, I think you have like to raise the compatibility level, I, and it's still not accessible through the desktop. I haven't tested it myself, but then of course, I mean, then you can you can even like select your calculation group, set it to private so that nobody will ever know that it exists, pretty much, Just and, like uh, and then have security. a no selection, yeah, a, a no selection expression in which you are applying effectively this filtering. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have to be very careful because, as we were saying, there is no relationship there, so. As long as you are applying it, then maybe, but uh, yeah, I would be careful with that. Okay, good question. Now, this is not mine. This uh, I just adapted it a little bit from uh, Jeff Weir. Uh, he created a cal calculation group that will apply the format string depending on the value. Yeah. So if it's a large value, it will apply millions. If it's smaller, thousands. If it's even smaller, nothing or something like this. So you have it's different just, just nice. strings uh, in the same table. Yeah, you see this is millions, this is thousands. And if we scroll down a bit, yeah, you see these ones don't even have a K. So mm -hmm. it's just like this. I mean, it's OK. And uh, again, dangerous at the same time, yeah, because <laughs> people might compare yeah. the number without realizing that uh, they have different format string. I think the best approach is to is to apply uh, the same Consistent. format to the whole column yeah. and then just in the in the header say okay or in the even in the title of the chart this is millions this is thousands this is how magazines do it. I think it's the cleanest approach. Yeah because I mean even having a k or an m for all the values it's really obnoxious I think. So just use titles, which is a good practice. And then maybe in the subtitle, you can say, OK, I'm showing this in millions and so on. OK, this is a bit more tricky. And uh, yeah, and I don't think you're going to use it, but it's interesting. But usually some accountants will uh, ask you for something like this. Oh, well, then yeah, give it to them <laughs> if they want it. Yeah, no warranty. OK, this is also a used for real. You see. I, I wanted to show you that. Um, let me see if I can show you that. So uh, I'm going to break it. But I mean, if you try to set up a conditional formatting for a matrix, yeah, and you say you want a gradient, by default, mm -hmm. you're setting up only for the values, right? Yeah. And then you have the option of picking the lowest and the highest value, then you will define the gradient between these two values. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But then you realize that all your totals are, are in white. It's like, oh, I don't want this. Because actually, I was, you know, I was uh, modeling this using uh, the year-over-year -year measure, year-over-year uh, -year percentage measure, which is equally valid for totals or values. Yeah? So I would like to really to have that format everywhere. OK, very good. But now, when you select I want the format in the value it's and totals, then the option to pick the highest and lowest value disappears. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I understand it's not so easy. Yeah? So, and then you have to specify the value that you want to format as like the maximum on each place, right? And also in the middle, if you want, you can define. So I came up with a whole very complicated way in which I calculate, so I, I, I define, let's let's have a look. Let me remember where was this. I think is a room. Conditional formatting gradient, is that it? Hmm. I probably conditional formatting. Let's have a look. Yeah. So 
this is quite crazy. Yeah. So you see here it starts and you store here the three color the three colors. Yeah, the bad, neutral, and good. So far, so good. Yeah. And then you see here the value that it will take as max, min, and neutral are calculated using other calculation items of the same calculation group. And this is referred to as a lateral recurrence or something like this, recursivity. And it's generally not a good practice because it's a bit dangerous because maybe eventually you'll go back to the same calculation item and it will only be applied once and you might not understand what's going on. But for this use case, I decided it was okay. Yeah. So I have all the code here and then I can just you know, use these different expressions to calculate them. And then of course I can I can come here and define the expression that I want to, so that it will use as maximum and minimum in order to define how close to the maximum or how close to the minimum it is. And of course, this will depend on whatever visual you're building. Yeah, because you'll have to look at the, the maximum removing filters for some things and stuff. And also you might want to do something different in case you're in the values or in the totals or depending on the total. So it gets a bit complicated. But basically then you can get these three values and then the current value. So far so good. And then you calculate the percent where you are. Yeah. So being a zero would be the neutral, 100 would be the maximum, minus 100 would be the minimum, right? And you do well. You do some calculations, and also you be, you're careful not to be above one, or I mean, just in case. Yeah. So you you make sure that you're not uh, above one. And here's when it gets tricky. Yeah. So here I create like a, a virtual table, and uh, and then you see here it what it does. It extracts the red, green, and blue mm -hmm. part of the regex, uh, not the regex, the, the hex uh, no, code. hex code. Yeah, so it will pick E5, 2, 9, 3, 7, and so on. Yeah. For the, um, yeah, so the bad color and the mid color and so on. So you get all the, um, this is three columns, right? And each row would have one of these elements. But of course, I cannot do operations with hexadecimal code. So here I copied some code from Filsimark and I convert this to decimal. Uh, yeah, you love the me. same for the neutral and the same for the good. Okay. And for my number as well. Yeah. So I calculate um, what do I. Okay. No, and I have my percentage, right? So now I translate that to color in decimal. So if I'm at 95%, then I should be 95 between this number and this number sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. And I think here I, I just be careful not to be above 255 or below zero, just in case. And now uh, what I do is I go back to hexadecimal for my color. Yeah. Again, with some code from Phil Simark. And, um, yeah, and uh, well, and this would be my, it could be like my whole table, yeah? But actually I'm only interested in this one because now I can concatenate over that table and get all just these values here and ascending by the value and okay, and this is my code. Very easy, you see, I mean, you can get well <laughs> with this. Uh, you see, I have lots of fun here. So, yeah, but uh, these are used comment. for real. Yeah, so they, they, there they was a good it. comment in the chat. So much work so that in the end someone will export it to Excel. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm not <laughs> I don't look at the I, I <laughs> this never <laughs> happens. Okay, this is also something that happened to me. So um you see here I, I have like values and a forecast and uh, the relationships are a bit different. Yeah, so but anyway, and you see that not all countries have uh, values for sales amount, but you see that all values have forecast. Yeah. So I want you to see how this looks. Yeah. So this is just to, uh, to, so that you're aware that when you filter a matrix by a measure, sometimes weird things happen. Okay. So let's have a look here. Uh, let me check. So with sales, okay, you see, I have a measure. Yeah, that checks the, the sales. 
the, the sales table and say, is this empty, this is not, whatever, okay? So, so if I apply a yes here, and uh, no, say it is yes, I should get rid of all these rows that have no sales amount, right? Mm -hmm. And this should be the only thing that happens, right? However, let's see what happens. I apply this, and then for some reason, <laughs> the forecast values are gone. Yeah, and uh, there's a couple of videos from SQL BI in Alberto going deep in the in the code from the uh, performance analyzer and realizing and uh, ah, yeah, put a plus zero somewhere and, and then it works. Okay, I tried that for real. I didn't find it. Okay, so <laughs> I had to think some other way of doing it. And um, so I'll get rid of this. And now I have another, I have a visibility calculation group. Let's look at this, which does basically the same thing, but it's a calculation group. Visibility, it's here, calculation items, only with sales. So I do basically the same thing. So if it's not empty, return the measure. If it's empty, then blank. And if it's all blank, then the row disappears, right? This is how matrix works. And uh, well, let's see what happens now. So if I come here and I apply this calculation item, it just works. Ooh. So, yeah. And uh, this this is only on the filter pane. You don't even need to put it on the screen. No, no, no. I mean, it's on the object, the visual. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. so I don't need. Yeah, this I mean, really that's cool. the right way to do it here, because otherwise you would break your, your metrics, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, and it just works. It, it, it gets any measure that is there, and uh, but of course it's going to evaluate over there. I don't know, it, probably the, the, the DAX before, uh, underneath it is something different, and well, it works, so good to know, right? Okay, now this is something also, it's one of my po most popular articles in the blog, because people sometimes want this, right? Because in, in you see here, I have a matrix, but they have like different, uh, it's not like sym symmetric, right? So you see here, I have current month, year to date, and year percent, here I have euros, year to date. I have like different structures, arbitrary two row headers. Mm -hmm. yeah? So this is a sort of, um, I mean, this is like a dynamic measure. Well, it, I don't know how to call it. Let's have a look. Um, remove like a tree. No, that's not it. Let me look. I, I don't remember what the name of this one. So. Uh, if you are um, leading the search. Yeah. Measure group, there it is. Yeah. So, um, so here, you see, first of all, it, so it's a bit like a calculation, uh, the dynamic one that we saw. So it, it first checked that we're about to replace a, a dynamic measure. But then it also checks what's the calculation item in the time intelligent one, because I know this is going to be underneath. Yeah. So, and I, and I store that. This is also very important. You can just capture the calculation item by doing a selected value on that column. And now, then I check. So this is, is this is one of the calculation items I want to show for that measure. Yeah. And then if it's uh, so true, then I please return the measure. You are defining all the possible combinations separately? Yeah, I mean, because I know what I want. I, I, I know uh -huh. that uh, for the sales amount group, yeah, of course, I want to use the sales amount measure, but mm -hmm. I only want to show certain calculation items. So I say, okay, if the calculation item is one of these three, then use that measure that I want to apply. Nice. But otherwise, blank. Really so, smart. Yeah. So if it it's <laughs> if it's blank, then it's not shown. But you need to do that with uh, so with a dynamic measure approach, mm -hmm. right? Because if you just have several measures uh, dragged into the matrix. It doesn't work. You yeah, will have the, sure. the, the column completely blank, but mm -hmm. it will not go away. But if it's a dynamic measure, 
then it uh, then it works. Oh, yeah. And so is... and that's how it it went. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm already talking for a long time. I don't know. Is everybody fine it, with it or? Yeah. If you have one more, uh, it would be perfect, and then we can go to the raffle. Okay. The most interesting one. That, the most. Okay. Uh, then not everybody can use it uh, right away. Okay. This is this is. I'll just show off. We're not gonna. Okay. Here I have a very <laughs> easy uh, measure, which is a color blue, but mm -hmm. I can make it lighter and more mm. transparent with a calculation group. How, <laughs> not how really useful, useful. How useful. How useful, can, right? Can I always be? get this request and no, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> uh, this is also not that useful, but uh, here you see, this is how it works normally. But boom, if I say auto, you see I you, all the columns are the same width. But this is, this would be nice to, to see how it works and then we can go to to the calculation, uh, to the rough. Yeah, uh, this is, but the, but the thing is not so useful because normally you don't have such a short headers. If you have long headers, this doesn't work. So no, it, it's not uh, adding the blanks uh, on the title. No, not, because you cannot change the title. The title is not a measure. So you have to add the title uh, on the measure. So that's the problem. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, okay, let me just show this one. So here you have we have a very arbitrary chart created with a calculation group already that is comparing me the year over year growth, but a different granularities. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so we have for the whole brand, a brand in Europe, and then also a couple of colors from that brand in Europe that we want to follow. How are these things going? And now look at this. Um, now I'm comparing Contoso versus other brands. Here I'm comparing Europe with other continents. And here I'm comparing colors with other colors. Yeah, this is a, would get a bit too long to explain, <laughs> but this is effectively explained on my blog. Yeah. And I don't think you're going to play that anytime soon. So uh, if you have to, just know that this is possible and that it's on my blog. So just look for it. It's a zoom out chart or something like this. And um, you, you will get all the details on how this is set up. You basically, you have a calculation group controlling the visibility of a chart mm -hmm. because when something is blank, you see that there's no titles or anything. So yep. when something is blank, it disappears. And then you can have like three charts on top of each other and with different calculation groups, you can control which one which, is blank. Yeah. And then just one will be visible and then you get your effect. This is really so, cool. Yeah, uh, I, I did share your blog uh, and okay. uh, your tabular editor uh, repo um, in the chat yeah. here. And uh, because uh, I'm using all kind of uh, scripts that you did, oh, uh, yeah. especially the time intelligence one. Time intelligence uh, is great. I use it as well. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to adapt it for some custom uh, calendars. Oh, well, yeah. But uh, well, it works. It totally works. And uh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm glad there were did. two questions. Uh, one yeah. from Fernando. At what time of dawn did you build this calculation group? Whoa, it was a question about the the one. Normally, with I start doing community stuff around 10:30 p.m. <laughs> until my body so, kind of falls asleep. Uh, so yeah, so we're after the kids are asleep, right? Yeah, yeah, that's mostly. <laughs> and sometimes on Sunday, Saturday morning, I get like two, three hours window that I can do stuff. But that's about it, yeah. And uh, there is another one uh, from uh, Stefan uh, Vicentio. Uh, is is it possible to create dynamic top N to use any measures with uh, any column in visuals? Dynamic so, top N. But... With calculation uh, groups? You top. will... I would have to have a look at that because... Um, I mean, top yeah. end you get, you basically, you're change. I mean, you, you need to define a measure think, and then it's like top yeah. end on over and that field, right? I think it should work with a numeric parameter as long as you are selecting the value there and then using it. But uh, I don't think you need calculation groups for that. Right? Ah, and with any column in visuals. 
I mean, there is one thing, I'm not sure if it goes in this direction or not, but calculation groups will only work on measures. And so it will never change the, the field that is used in a, in, a, in a visual object. Yeah. Even if they look like columns in a matrix. Because I, yeah, think yeah, this yeah, is exactly. the, I think this is the trick here. They look like new columns, but actually mm. you are doing uh, calculations there. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll, but uh, yeah, something we can discuss more in detail. Yeah, and I see some good comments uh, about mm -hmm. uh, the how many use cases uh, are available. Oh, yeah. It's already, yeah, I, I started blogging pretty much when you started your uh, user group. So, yeah, yeah. Quite a lot, yeah. and uh, I, I was following you and Kane Snyder. You two oh. were my, my go to guys uh, for calculation groups. And uh, yeah, I've seen some good. really, really good examples from both of you, and uh, I'm oh, loving yeah. it. Every time I need something, I'm looking either on your blog, and uh, usually yeah. I find it there. But uh, otherwise, uh, I saw Kane also on uh, yeah. Reed's channel and uh, with lots of use cases at the beginning yeah. when nobody was even uh, considering that calculation yeah. groups can come to uh, desktop. But they, well, they, yeah. they are know. really helpful. I know. So I, if you follow the, the Workout Wednesday thing, I, I published a challenge there in July, the beginning of this month. And uh, there's also a couple of calculation groups, like not common uses. Mm -hmm. So I, I use them sometimes like to, you know, model how things interact with each other. So it's uh, one of these calculations groups that you don't really see, but you put mm -hmm. there and, and then things happen. Hidden, hidden one that uh, Something, just yeah, works. Something, yeah, filter panel ones. And, and then I, the effect is that you have like a scatter chart. Mm -hmm. many dots and then you can move them across time and you move all the bubbles in there but then mm. when you click one bubble then there's another chart behind and then the whole path is visible for that alone and you can select even more than one and the whole path for the selected values will display and this Very is the nice. workout uh, wednesday right workout the, wednesday yeah I, yeah i think i have the link uh, probably, yeah. I, yeah uh Found it. I, don't know I have it if on. They published on a shortcut. mine because I it was missing like week twenty nine. Otherwise, I'll find the link. Yeah, week twenty seven. That's me. I don't see it on the first page, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm pasting the link this, now. Yeah. This seems really, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, thank you very much, Bernat. Let's go quickly to the raffle and then uh, come back yeah. for wrap up and uh, stop the recording. Whoever, as I said, whoever wants to stay a bit more, it's uh, more than welcome. So let me share my screen. Of course, uh, we are using a Power BI report in a Power BI user group to at least for half of the raffle. So we are having a Microsoft form. Uh, Power Automate to get the data and put them in a SharePoint list. And then with the Power BI report, we are connecting to that uh, SharePoint list. Okay. I used to have a Power Apps to um, randomize the IDs, but uh, I found a bug and uh, scrapped it. So I never had time to debug it. So we are using something else. So let's see how many uh, participants. That's the feedback from today. Wow. So... Yeah. And uh, let's see how many participants are now. So uh, I'm just refreshing the file. As you can see, we are pretty international. We were pretty oh, yeah. international today. So Mexico, UK, uh, South Africa, Brazil, it's India. Fernando Calero there, or like. Yeah, yeah, Fernando is uh, always <laughs> coming. He is. He... I mean, I said it just, to, but of course he is there. Uh, okay, so eight participants for two licenses. Uh, pretty good chances, I would say. Yeah, not bad. So let's go to uh, the numbers. And uh, here I have them all, but I want to make another refresh just to make sure I have everybody copy. And then go to the wonderful Wheel of Names. So here, if I'm pasting the names, and deleting the header. Well, if I could do it right, it would be perfect. So I have to do it like this. 
I'm not used to my new mouse. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> so shuffle the names and spin the wheel for the first winner. Let's see. Vinesh, congrats. You are the first winner. Really cool. And now let's close it. Shuffle the names again. And from the remaining seven, let's see who's winning another license for Enterprise DNA. Victor, congrats. You are the second winner. Hey, way to go. I will contact you after the meetup to confirm your email addresses. So, Bernat, thank you again for taking the time to come and uh, show us what's possible, the art of possible, and uh, teaching us the basics. So, I, I love that you started from the basics and you took us to, to that one that uh, I would probably not do it even for my family. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... it's that one uh, with uh, uh, the Dex code from uh, Phil Seamark, it's uh, oh, yeah. way it, above my head. I mean, so sometimes I never... it's like, it's not even possible. And then it's like, oh, maybe it is. And then I have to try. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, thank you again for uh, taking the time. Thank you all for joining and uh, see you on the next meetup. Thank you.